Hey, Dan, thank you for meeting with me to interview for AbilityFest USA. No problem, Sam. Yeah, okay, so I just, I'm gonna start with a couple questions. So the first one is tell us a bit about yourself, um, your age, your ability, um, where you're from, things like that. Okay, um, I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I am 45. And I have a milder form of muscular dystrophy, um, Becker's or limb girdle, haven't figured it out for sure yet. Um, and I currently play uh, wheelchair bocha or bocce ball mm -hmm. and used to play wheelchair tennis. Nice. Um, so uh, you already mentioned what sport or sports you participated in. Um, can you maybe give us a little bit of more background of like where you started to where you are now with your sport? Sure. Um, so my disability is progressive. So I was walking and playing tennis up until my 20s. <clears throat> and after that, I just figured I couldn't play anymore because I was having trouble balancing and I was transitioning to a wheelchair. So when I was about 30, 32, um, I just happened to be on the internet because I like tennis and I'm a tennis fan and saw a picture on some website um, of someone in an electric wheelchair playing tennis. And I was like, holy cow, I, <laughs> I need to do this. And so then I was on the tennis court the next day with one of my friends just trying to hit a ball over. And it was horrible because I couldn't do it anymore. But I still had that feeling of like, I really want to do this. So um, it just snowballed from there. I started playing regularly on my own. And I found a coach. Um, I was living in Hawaii at the time, who it was like October or something, I think, I don't remember. It was about to be winter, and uh, but in Hawaii, it's beautiful. So I was able to just go out and play with my coach, and it just happened from there. And um, I, it was all the same old feelings that I had playing before, and um, I ended up traveling and playing tournaments and, you know, going around the world to do that, and I never was very good at it at it so I would go and I'd play my matches and then I'd go sightseeing but it felt the same as like if you were a real professional tennis player and it it would just was an amazing amazing experience and that's why I keep playing sports even though I can't really do tennis as well as I used to um because my arms get a little bit weaker um I can play uh bocce ball now so Nice. That's awesome. I think it's incredible that you can kind of connect the difference from when you were standing and playing upright able body tennis to then wheelchair tennis. So that's uh, really good. And how you kind of had a lot of the same feelings and connections with that. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, so you already um, kind of told me what introduced you to adaptive sports. So it was kind of yourself and you just being um, curious and looking it up yourself and kind of getting into it and figuring out what works for you. Um, and then you said you met a coach that um, you were able to connect with and kind of help you to adapt tennis to work for you. Yeah, and I think the the thing about that was there wasn't there wasn't really a lot of people who knew how to coach wheelchair wheelchair tennis. So it was just a matter of finding someone who was interested in the challenge the same way I was. Um, and it didn't really take that long because I mean, any coach or teacher or whatever is going to be excited to find help people find a creative solution to play so um it was rewarding for him too just to see how i progressed beyond even his expectations so absolutely yeah. and then you just kind of find all the other resources after that once you get yeah. into it absolutely that's awesome good um so you've pretty much already answered why you continue to participate but if you can give me like one solid reason as to why you continue to participate in adaptive sports let's hear it um I kind of have two reasons. One is that it's just really fun. I'm very competitive. So it's fun to like be able to just go and compete mm -hmm. and feel that pressure and that stress, but also be motivated to like get better. Um, but also too, I know that by competing and doing things like I'm making sure that my body's staying optimized, I guess you would say. I mean, you wouldn't guess that from the extra pounds I need to lose, but <laughs> at the same time, I'm doing more things that I probably wouldn't be doing if I just, didn't participate in sports or like yeah didn't even know it existed so yeah definitely that makes sense to me um well you guess you've already you keep answering like all of my questions um <laughs> in your answers already so um my next question is how has being involved in adaptive sports impacted your overall health so physical mental emotional social so do you have anything um that you haven't already touched on that you can maybe share a little insight just on some of those other parts of um overall health yeah i think um like I was, I've always been very independent. And so when I started playing wheelchair tennis, I didn't really know that many people who even had disabilities. Um, I mean, I knew people who had muscular dystrophy, but 
not the same type that I had and not the same amount of, um, I guess, interest in sports and motivation and that sort of thing. So like the, the benefits that I got were from diving right in and just meeting so many people and seeing how they did different things. And I traveled with one of my friends um, from Hawaii who played wheelchair tennis and just learned so much. And, and that was like an amazing, it was like a support group that I didn't really have to go to meetings for. It just kind of happened. So that's, that's where like the mental part, but also the physical part. Um, you just learn how to do things and you learn how to adapt and it just all around was very, very helpful as, as things even started to progress with my disorder. So. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I think you're just hearing like it's still maintaining that level of independence that you always like really need and strive for. So that's yeah, exactly. Awesome. Thank you. Um, what is the most impactful aspect of participating in adaptive sports for you? Um, I think, I think it's just like having something to look forward to. Um, there's always a practice or there's always, uh, an event coming up, um, something on the calendar to look forward to and improve on. And, and I think that's something that we don't really always have, whether it's our career or our family or whatever, there's not always something on the calendar to like have as a goal. And so, especially for people who need like me who need to be kind of motivated to stay active, like to have that out there is really important. And because there's so many organizations now who are doing events, it's, there's always something that you can find to do. And it's just a matter of searching it out. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Um, hmm. So you already touched on growth and dependence, which is again, my next question. Um, so I guess what is the biggest growth you've seen yourself within independence within adaptive sports? Um, I would say with traveling, mm -hmm. uh, because if, and, and this is because I talk to so many people who use wheelchairs that want to travel, but are really afraid of it. And mm -hmm. I remember that fear and, and the only way to get to a, an event, a tennis tournament or a bocce tournament is to physically get on a plane or get in a car or get on a train and go there. Yeah. And so that's really something that I have was forced to do as a result of participating in sports. And because you're traveling with people, you're learning, like I said before, you're, tra you're learning from who everyone who's around you. And you start to see that these people who are flying all over the world are like totally fine and doing it all the time. And, and I think that that was kind of a nice secondary, secondary impact of playing sports. You, you just kind of like learn to find that you can go wherever you want to, even if it's not sports related. So now I travel all the time and I love it. So yeah, that's amazing. And for those of you that don't know Dan, he travels all over the world and it's incredible. And so I know myself, it's even intimidating to travel alone um, as an able-bodied person. Um, so just having that factors of having to get transported and making sure your equipment is not broken or anything like that. Um, I think that's a huge concern. And so for you to just kind of throw that in the back seat and not worry about that is a huge um, independence growth. And that's amazing. Yeah. What? And and just to say, I mean, to compliment that is also being able to rely on people for help is something that not a lot of people want to do. And so even though I'm pretty independent, yeah. just being able to like know that there's certain situations where it's okay to ask for help or, or accept help even yeah. more importantly, um, that's another thing, like, especially with travel that you just learn and you adapt and take on, so. I think that's a huge point. I know a lot of people are sometimes afraid to ask for help. So just saying like, it's okay, just do it. People are gonna yeah. help you out in a, either way, they'll, they'll figure it out. So it's good. Yeah. Awesome, perfect. Um, uh, what does uh, the impact of participating adaptive sports have on your relationships? So whether it be family, friends, coaches, um, other athletes? Um. I've, I mean, I've noticed different positive impacts all across the board. I think with my family, um, they are like, really interested in coming to events and seeing things, even though I'm like, no, you don't have to, you don't have to. But they want to, and like, it's something to talk about, something they want to help me with, whether it's practice or traveling to, to just come along for support. Um, and I think the other thing too, is like, you just meet so many new people that you start to like find new friends and whether they're people you keep in touch with online or see at every event. Um, it just adds to your network of people that, you know, you can count on and who, who understand what you're going through. Yeah. 
Well, I know that um, sometimes your nieces come to bocce practice, so I love seeing them run around on the court and you um, slip them a dollar here and there to get them to do different skills. <laughs> yeah, it's requiring more and more money as they get older. <laughs> exactly. That's always good. Um, so the next question is, uh, tell us about a challenge that you have had to overcome in participating in your sport. Um, I think the the main challenge for people who want to travel and go to things is the financial challenge. Um, and because it's not cheap to go, especially if you need to bring people along with you to help. Yeah. Um, and so you kind of either have to like find a way to save or you have to find grants and luckily like the challenge athletes uh foundation mm -hmm. has been really great at supplementing some of the travel expenses and equipment expenses but also too there's um a lot of like like wasa for example has equipment that you can use so you don't have to like show up with a brand new wheelchair wheel uh, tennis wheelchair you just show up and you can use whatever's there to try it out and then like you can see if you want to invest your your money and time into to doing that so i think that was probably like logistically or one of the bigger challenges to get over. Um, Cause physically, I mean, you just, <laughs> you're, I'm kind of used to just trying to make whatever I need to work physically just happen. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Good. Um, I'm glad that, well, too, I know that you're a go-getter, but for a new person who's going into adaptive sports to understand like, well, yeah, I can't afford it and equipment's so expensive and how am I supposed to know what to use? And so it's great that, for you looking for those answers, you've always found them in grant writing or organizations that might have that equipment or um, teaching moments and stuff like that for you. So that's good. Yeah. For sure. Awesome. Okay. So next one. Um, is there anyone special that has helped you or mentored you along the way? Ooh, there's a lot of people. Um, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, just uh, like I mentioned, family. There's always that encouragement from family. Um, other athletes, even people you're competing against. Um, the top, I would say that like, what was really cool was when I, when I mentioned that I found that picture of the person playing wheelchair tennis in an electric mm -hmm. chair and that kind of motivated, motivated, motivated me to play, like to actually meet him, his name's Nick Taylor, mm -hmm. um, and then have to play a match against him and get my ass kicked. Uh, <laughs> that has been very intimidating. Yeah. Very intimidating, but like him and the other top players, um, David Wagner's another top quad wheelchair tennis player. And mm -hmm. to like have to play them and know you're gonna get your butt kip, kicked, but they're there to help make sure that the new people coming up are learning mm -hmm. and they, they'll compete as hard as they can, but they'll also like try to help you out. Mm -hmm. And I think, that's something that's pretty amazing too. It's like, you're not just getting in there and instantly on competitive grounds with everyone who you're playing against. Everyone's kind of like all in the same, on the same page as far as like, we want, all want to get better. We all want to want to achieve things and understanding that there's a lot of, not a huge population of people who will go out and play wheelchair tennis. So it's important to nurture that. So I think those top players have been really motivating for me and helpful. Awesome. That's really cool to hear that. Yeah, it was kind of not a, I, you're my competitor. I don't want to have anything to do with you. And it was more of like a, yeah, like, let's build you up. Let's get you, yeah. what you, need you to, so that I do have other competitors that I do want to right, exactly. care about with, right? Exactly. Awesome. All right. Last and final question, Dan. This has been such a good interview. Um, why should others get involved in adaptive sports? Uh, if you're looking for something to do that is beyond the living room and out in the world and you're gonna, you wanna meet people, you wanna learn something new. Um, there's just so many different reasons. And like the exercise, the, the, that's kind of like a secondary benefit of all of this to me, even though it's the primary reason you're going out. Um, just wanting to do something, um, like instead of sitting around playing video games, like you can still play video games, but maybe go out and play actual games and sports and <laughs> and just start to learn that you can do these things that you might have never thought of so yeah i think that's that's probably sums up why i got into it so i think yeah. other people can relate to that too awesome well again this is such a good interview i know you answered a lot of my questions and other answers and so thank you for either repeating yourself or just building on other answers um but again dan dorzinski thank you again for your interview and for telling us about your adaptive sports career in wheelchair tennis and basketball absolutely sam great talking to you
Thank you.